What's going on guys? Just throwing together a quick update video. Uh, just to preface this video, we are on the brink of seeing some absolute madness in the market. Um, this upcoming squeeze that we're going to be seeing on the meme stocks more than likely will be the MOAS in my opinion. And there's going to be chaos in the market from that. Potentially a market collapse fully. Um, things are about to get pretty wild. And you know, I'm not going to start giving dates and everything, but just a general roundabout time range uh, that I'm seeing this playing out in is end of July to early August. Um, that's pretty much it. And, and, you know, I'm saying this because just as far as, you know, the tracking on AMC, the macro, as far as landmarks go, we are at the third bottom here at the end of this pattern, at the end of the macro. Um, and from this, we should be breaking out of this triangle and squeezing. And once again, like I just said, this more than likely will be the MOAS. So we are on the brink of seeing absolute madness in the market. With that being said, and I'm going to, this video might be relatively long, but I'm going to touch on two possible scenarios here for AMC. And I'm not saying either is the case. It's honestly a coin flip, and I'm going to get into that. Um, and explain my reasoning and and everything. So, you know, I'll just I'll start the video off with SPY and we'll start from there. I'll go, you know, SPY down to the AMC macro and then from there I'm going to branch off into a potential bearish thesis and, you know, I say bearish, you know, that's very strong use of the word. It's not really bearish. It would just be pulling back to the lower low that we were originally looking for. Um, if you remember, that was the original plan was pulling back to a third lower low, but we didn't have to. We didn't get that yet, and we don't have to, but I'm going to be touching on I see a case for it. I'm just going to mention it because I see a case for it. I'm not going to ignore it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to touch on that. Remember, that was the original plan was coming down to a lower low. So I'm going to briefly touch on that, and I there's a case for it. I see it. Um, I'm not saying it's 100% the case. It's honestly a coin flip, and more than likely next week, we're going to be finding out. Um, we're expecting a move next week on AMC. It could be mid to late, you know, mid to end of week next week. But regardless, that's where that's what I'm thinking is 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 the case here. So um, let's just jump into the video. So we'll start with the macro on SPY, which for the billionth time is extremely bullish, very very bullish, extremely bullish on SPY. So descending broadening wedge for a year here. You break out of it and retest. You reclaim the ascending triangle. Again, the descending broadening wedge that we were trading in for a year. Uh, transitioned into an ascending triangle here. So from the retest, you reclaim the triangle, you're sideways towards the end, you break out, you retest, you get the full breakout here and gap up from that. And then we got upside to 444, pulled back to the 20 EMA, found a bounce off, double topped, and now we're pulling back once more. Um, Golden Cross on the daily is extremely bullish on the S&P 500. The Golden Cross happened probably a month or two months ago. And 69 days now in a row closing over the 200 200 ema so we haven't seen the 200 ema in over two months um this chart is very very bullish and spy will be going to all-time highs in the relatively near future so now getting into uh friday's price action on spy it was legitimately exactly what i said in my past video so you know i'll just start with the with the ascending triangle here so this is the end of the ascending triangle you you fake out here, you come back to support, and you find this bull trend and ride this ride this trend all the way up to 444. Um, local high is 444 here. You come down, gap gap down below the bull trend and trade in this descending channel for about a week before you break that to the upside. And then we got the double top that we were looking for slightly higher than the previous highs that we saw back here. Now from that, I said now we can expect to find a pullback back to the middle of the range roughly 437 438 uh in this range here that's exactly what happened we found a bounce off of it on thursday and then thursday closed around 440 and in my video on thursday i said now you could potentially expect to see a little bit more upside on spy back up to 442 the bottom of this range up here which is exactly what happened 442 and change i think 442.60 roughly was the high of the day on friday and then I said, from that 442, you're going to expect to pull back once more and come back down and, and, and form a double bottom here. And from 40, uh, 442, we rejected and came all the way back down to 430, 438 and closed the day there. Now, exactly what I said on Thursday is what happened. So from here now, you can maybe expect a day of sideways. You could, you could you trade sideways on Monday, potentially. Or we just finish this up, come down, double bottom, 437. 
from this double bottom here at 437, I'm expecting to find a bounce and break this range of 444 and continue the climb upwards on SPY. So this looks very, very good. Jumping into the symmetry now, once again, the blue box is your middle. You have your lowest low. You have one break above the ascending triangle right here to retest the macro of the wedge. Coming into the red, you come down on both sides, breaking below this horizontal line at 380. Same on both sides. This one came a little bit lower on the left to retest the, the wedge again. From there, you bounce up to 418 on the dot uh, on both sides, here and here. 418 on the dot, you bounce up to it, you reject. You come down, bounce off uh, 380 on the dot on both sides now. And then from there, you get the three touches on 430, three touches on 430, break through, reject 438, break through, reject 438. And then from there, you went to 450. And then from 450, you pull back to 438, establish support before moving higher. So once again, we didn't get the full move to 450. We rejected 444. And because of that, I said you could expect to pull back a little bit further than 438, roughly to this horizontal line, 429, 430 here, which is pretty much what happened. We pull back to 431, find support there. And then we got the double top slightly higher, which is exactly what happened back here. Uh, from the 450 rejection, you come down, find support in 438. You bounce back up, you double top slightly higher than this. And then from there, you pull back into the middle of the range and play this W out. So that is exactly what happened over here. From the 444 rejection, you come down, find support, double top slightly higher right here, and then you pull back to the middle of the range and play this W out now. So this looks very, very good. This move on SPY is perfectly symmetrical and very, very bullish. So once again, I'm touching on SPY on a daily basis because the previous two squeezes on AMC, January and June, SPY was rallying to the upside in a very similar fashion to what we're seeing now. Um, once again, these, this range here that we're trading at right now on SPY, we haven't seen in over a year. All the way back here, April 2022 was the last time SPY saw this range. And from October 2022 until today, SPY has been, done nothing but form higher highs and higher lows to the upside and break both macro patterns, the descending broadening wedge and the ascending triangle. Again, touching on SPY daily because it's very bullish right now. And that was the case in January and June when AMC and the rest of the meme basket was squeezing. So this is very significant and that's why I touch on it on a daily basis. Now getting into AMC, the macro on AMC. And I mentioned this in my video last time, you have this descending trend line from 2017 until you squeeze in January, 2021. And that would be comparable to the descending trend line that we have here in our current cycle. You have your macro fractal break right here, this gap down, which takes you into the downtrend. And you have the exact same thing right here, this gap down, this macro fractal break. You play out this pattern right here, the sideways, same right here before you actually drop down into the downtrend. Same thing on both sides. So again, you're green. Uh, it's, you're just laddering down. That's what this is. It's more or less a W, uh, same on both sides, come back up. Um, the red is more or less a cup, same on both sides. And then the blue, come down, bounce up, come all the way down, curl up towards the end, come down, bounce up, come all the way down, curl up towards the end before dropping down to the flat portion here where you have three touches on the bottom, one, two, and three. From the third touch, you form an uptrend, breaks you out of the triangle and you squeeze. Same thing over here, one, two, and three. Now, getting into this, the other chart that I always show without the, the colored boxes on the flat portion, say on both sides in the lines here. Once again, one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. From the six point, you drop down, you have three touches on the bottom, one, two, three, one, two, three, before you break the triangle and you squeeze. Now, I mentioned multiple times, this third bottom that we were looking for in the current cycle, um, I was looking for a lower low originally, a lower low than what we saw in April, the April knife here after hours. We were looking for a lower low originally. Um, I said, we don't have to get one. We didn't get one. Um, and this is where we are now at this third bottom here. So as far as landmarks go on the macro, there's not much more to play out here and we will be squeezing very soon. Um, once again, you know, timeline for the squeeze, I'm not going to just start giving dates uh, like specific dates. But as far as landmarks and this macro playing out, this is going to happen ve like very soon, like, like within a month, in my opinion. So that's that. Now, I'm going to now getting into the TA on AMC and I'm going to show both scenarios, the bearish and I'm saying bearish. Uh, it's not really bearish. What I mean by bearish is there's a possibility that we do come down and form a lower low on the third bottom here. 
um, still, it doesn't change anything if we do that. And, you know, from that third bottom, it would be the same thing. We would be expecting to find this uptrend here that would break us out of the triangle and would take us to our squeeze. We don't have to f have a lower low here. I'm just pointing this out because it's a possibility. And if this happens, it doesn't change anything. Remember, the, the lower low was what we were originally looking for. So now getting into the TA, and I'm going to start with the bear case scenario. And again, I say bear case scenario. What I mean by bear case is uh, this is if we came down to a lower low, um, and that would more than likely be next week. So I posted this in Discord a week ago, and I saw this, I saw this a week ago where it, it, it's playing out very similar to what happened back here right before we got the knife on the April lows. So I posted this a week ago. I, had, I already saw the case for it. I just didn't think it's very likely. I still don't think it's likely, but it is a possibility. I see a case for it, and I'm going to touch on that. I'm going to try to explain this in the simplest possible way I can, um, breaking this down as simply as I can. So what we're looking at right here is on the left, you have January 15th, 2021, and on the right is prior, right before we got the knife in April, the, the April after hours knife on that AK that dropped. So that's what we're looking at. Um, so when we finished playing this pattern out, we were expecting a knife. That's exactly what happened. The AK drops after hours. We knife. And uh, let me try to explain this as simply as I can. So this is January 15, 2021 on the left. This is a microfractal in an uptrend. This is a microfractal in an uptrend here. Over here, it's the same exact pattern. Touch points and everything. It's perfect. Same exact thing playing out on both sides. Same pattern. But the left is a, a microfractal in an uptrend. And on the right is a microfractal in a downtrend. So when the knife that we got in April, the after hours knife, it shouldn't have been as low as, as it was. So when, when you knife from here in, in the 2021 cycle, you come down. It's not as extreme as what happened in April. And that's because this is a microfractal in an uptrend. You knife, you form a V here, curl, curl up towards the end, and then you gap up from there. You can see the bottom of the candles here. You gap up from there. Over here, we just knifed straight down. So this is a microfractal and a downtrend. This is a microfractal and an uptrend. Same exact pattern. So now on the left is the the microfractal and a downtrend. Again, it's the same pattern as the uptrend. It, this is prior to the April knife that we got, and this is currently where we are. So it's the same thing once again. It's the same exact pattern. The only the only thing here is we do not know if we're in a microfractal in a downtrend right now or a microfractal in an uptrend. So it's the same pattern, same touch points. You could see it playing out. You get the double top, we have the double top here. You break down, you bounce off that and you find your, your descending trend line here. Same thing here. Horizontal lines run across from where you find that bounce on the first bottom here. Same thing here. So you bounce up, you find the top trend and then you come down and you play this W. You have a higher high on the right. Same thing here. You have a higher high on the right. Come back up to the trend come back up to the trend, come down, play this V, come down, play this V, and then you start getting downside and you break below the horizontal line again. This is the projected price action for next week regardless. In my opinion, whether we are in an uptrend or a downtrend right now, this is what we're going to see next week. It'll probably be Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, uh, where we're going to be playing out the rest of this. So this is what we play out next week, theoretically. Um, and depending on if the bottom is in or not is going to depend on if we actually knife down to the, the mid threes or if we just knife a little bit, curl up and then gap up from there to the breakout pattern. So regardless of either scenario, this is what I'm going to be expecting for next week is price action that looks something like this. Uh, it's the same exact pattern on both sides. And it really just depends on if we're um, in, a, in an uptrend right now or a downtrend. And I'm saying that relatively to the micro, the micro, if, if it's a fractal in an uptrend or a downtrend, it's very hard to explain, but it's possible the bottom's in right now. It's possible the bottom is not in, and we're going to get the lower low that we originally were looking for. It's pretty much my point here. And once again, and this is something else, ape. Um, if you remember in April, when we knifed, when AMC knifed after, uh, after hours in April, Ape ripped. This is the rip right here that you saw in April while AMC was tanking. And Ape spent three months in this pattern here, very sideways, very barcode price action before breaking out, coming back down to retest. And then you find a bounce off, you come down, and now it's curling back up to the upside here. So 
if we're in verse ape right now what theoretically would happen is ape starts ripping and then amc gets the lower low that we were originally looking for and the case here would be for the conversion ape and amc would probably meet somewhere around three dollars before the conversion goes through um, in the same breath, it's also possible that Ape just starts ripping right now, and Ape would Ape and AMC would be synced up now and not inverse, and Ape would just rip rip up right now, and AMC would be relatively sideways next week for the majority of the week. Ape would catch up, and then the conversion would go through without AMC getting the lower low. So the bear case scenario, once again, it's not really a bear case scenario. We would just be actually coming down to the lower low that we were originally looking for. Um, in that scenario, it would be the same exact thing from that third bottom. We would be expecting to find an uptrend here. Um, same exact thing, and then break the triangle and squeeze from there. It doesn't change anything. If we get the lower low, the, the, if we come back down to 3.6, uh, 3.7 range, it wouldn't change anything about the macro. That would be what we were originally looking for. In the same breath, and I said this before, we don't have to have a lower low. Um, you know, A perfect example of that is... So the second bottom doesn't come as low as the first right here in the January 2021 cycle. Over here, it came slightly lower. So it doesn't have to be perfect. So there is a case for both. Um, it's honestly a coin toss. I'm leaning more towards we're not going to get the knife. But there is a case for it, and I'm just presenting the case for it. In either scenario, though, and this is the fucked up part, in either scenario, so again, this is January 15th, 2021. And this was the April knife that we got. So January 15th would be equivalent to that April knife that we got. And then we have the April knife here and our current cycle here where we are right now on the micro. In either scenario, we're expecting to play this out. This, this pattern here in yellow, we would ex be expecting to play this pattern out regardless of either scenario. But it really just depends on it, are we a micro fractal in a downtrend right now or are we a micro fractal in an uptrend? If we're a micro fractal in, an, in a downtrend, what would happen is um, we would get the knife the, the, the same way that we saw in, um, in April. It would probably be after hours. The, there would probably be news on, on the, the court case. It would probably get news. And then after hours, we would knife the same way we saw in April. That's if it was a micro fractal in a downtrend. If it was a micro fractal in an uptrend, what would happen is we would get this knife and then we would just gap up into the breakout iteration. Either way, we'd be expecting price action that looks uh, more, more or less like this. And then at the end here, and there's probably going to be news dropped, um, then we would get the move either up or down. Next week, I'm expecting a move to the upside or downside, a, a, a relatively big move We're you know, out of this range, the sideways price action that we're seeing. If we get the move to the upside, that's a, a thousand percent confirmation. The bottom is in and that move to the upside will be our breakout. If we get to the, the move to the downside, uh, that would just be us coming down to our third bottom, the final bottom, the lower low and the final landmark on the macro. There's no more landmarks to play out here. The only landmark is the, the third low here, the final bottom. Um, and again, I'm just giving two scenarios where the bottom would be in right now and the bottom would not be in right now. Uh, I'm not sure if I explain that the best way. I'm just trying to, you know, it makes sense in my head. I'm just trying to explain it the best I can, as simply as I can. And so that would be the bear case scenario where we would be coming down to a lower low. And in that case, Ape would rip uh, and probably catch up to, to AMC. It would probably meet somewhere around $3 and the conversion would go through from there. Um, in the same breath, we could also, the bottom could also be in on AMC. And and we'll get into that now, to the, until in, into the, um, the bullish scenario that we've been talking about every day. So, and we'll jump into that now, starting with the micro. Again, the micro, what we're doing is looking at the flat portion, the orange, purple, and blue versus the orange, purple, and blue here. So the micro, uh, same shit. I'm not gonna, I'm already 18 minutes, 19 minutes in, so I'm not gonna drag this video out. I'm gonna try to go through this quickly. The same pattern on both sides, um, one, two, and three bottoms, one, two, and three bottoms. Horizontal line drawn across, the touch points were all perfect. Uh, where we would have just came down to our third bottom here, theoretically, if the bottom is in, this would have been our third bottom, and now we'd be in this uptrend here, and in this pullback from this pump right here, we would be right here, and, you know, funny enough, this would be around January 15th, 2021, so either scenario, it it's going to look the same way, uh, which would be right here, 
Again, we're tracking this faster. From the third bottom until your peak was 22 days. We're on day seven or eight now from the third bottom, and we're tracking this faster. And the reason we're tracking this faster is because there's more volume. Speed will be relative to volume in the tracking on the macro and the micro. There's more volume here. That's why we're moving through this faster. So again, the area chart, this looks insanely good. Where you come down, you have chop at the bottom. That's your first bottom on both sides. You get the three peaks and in increasing height. Same on both sides. The, uh, the purple is more or less a cup with a higher high on the right. Same on both sides. The blue, you come down, break below the horizontal line, bounce above. Break below the horizontal line, bounce above. You get your second bottom from there. You get your second bottom from there. Tri peak on both sides. You get your tri peak. And then from the third peak of the tri peak, you come down one last time. You find your third bottom, and then from the third bottom, you find an uptrend, and you squeeze from there. It's a straight line. So the two scenarios, once again, would be this was actually a third bottom. The bottom's in now, and then this is the uptrend, and we'd be in this pullback here uh, where you get this peak here, and then you pull back slightly before breaking out. This is the breakout move here, and the retest, and then you squeeze from there. So that would be scenario one where this, the bottom is in here and we are in the pullback from this move here. The other scenario is we would pull back more to the lower low on the third bottom and then form the uptrend and squeeze from there. Um, again, this is just the channel tracking, the channel that we've been in. Um, you know, when we got that pop on volume, I, th I drew the trend lines in early and then, you know, I've just been tracking it from there. So getting into the tracking now, um, updated a little bit more now. It looks like to me we're... Actually, we just came down to the second bottom. Theoretically, this would have been the second bottom here, the double bottom here. That's where it looks like we are to me. Um, where, you know, from this, this, this pop here to back to the top of the channel, you break down from that, break below the channel, and you get your first bottom, as you do here. You pop above this purple line, come below it. You pop above the purple line, come below it. And you pop back into the channel on both sides. And then from there, you come down, bounce off the purple, come down, bounce off the purple, pop back up from there. And then you get the, the, the uh, double bottom. So that's where we would be um, as far as the tracking goes in the channel. And next week, probably Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, you'd be expecting to play out this. Uh, maybe even to, into Thursday, where you'd be expecting to play out all of this before getting this move on Friday. And that's where you would end the week, getting this, this move, the, the January 15th move here. So that's that. And again, the daily gaps and the EMAs, the gaps. So there's a daily chart of the 2021 cycle on the left, daily chart of the current cycle on the right. The gaps are in the same exact spots uh, on both sides. The EMAs are the exactly the same. I, I touched on all this. this I'm not going to make this video crazy long. Um, if you remember me saying the next time the 20 EMA crosses the 50 EMA to the upside, we will be squeezing. Um, and I still believe that to be the case. And as far as where we are on the daily, would be right here where we just rejected off the 20, uh, say on both sides. So we'd be, we'd be in this pullback here off the rejection off the 20, about to get this move, and this would be the breakout move here where you pop back up to the uh, the 50 EMA. Um, so that looks good. And then again, the Heiken Ashi, where um, I went all over all this in my last video, the momentum of the moves here, where this would have been our third bottom. And then you pop up here in the green on both sides, and then you get the pullback in the red. On both sides and then you're you know you're relatively flat here before you get the breakout move here um flew through most of the charts in this video i mean nothing really changed on friday i was just you know i'm being very repetitive so i don't need to really touch on the charts in full every video um really i just tried to explain the two scenarios here where it's possible we come back down to the lower low and it's also possible that the bottom is in and again, that would really just depend on, are we a fractal on a downtrend, a micro fractal on a downtrend, or a micro fractal on an uptrend right now? So again, with that, because it's the same pattern, it's the same exact pattern. Uh, one is in a downtrend, one's in an uptrend. So this would, this would be January 15, 2021. And this would have been leading up to the April after hours knife that we saw. It's the same exact pattern, but one is in a downtrend, one's in an uptrend. This one, you break below, make a V and then gap up. This one, we just knifed straight down. So that's where we are now. We have the same exact pattern playing out once again. And really what happens here is going to depend on if the bottom is in, this would be a fractal and an uptrend now. And theoretically what would happen is the same thing, uh, the same thing here where you get this knife and then gap up from there. Or if the bottom is not in, what would happen is we play out all of this and then you get the knife. I'm not sure if I explain that, explain that the best way. It makes sense to me. Um, next week is going to be very telling. I'm expecting a move on AMC next week. Um, and depending on which way this move goes, 
um, if we get a move to the upside to the next range up next week, we are squeezing very soon. That would be the breakout move. And if we get a move to the downside, that would just be us coming back down to the third bottom, um, the lower low. And that wouldn't change anything. If, if that happens, it does not change anything about the macro. We would just be checking off the, the last landmark that we have, which is this third bottom here. So that's pretty much the video. I hope I explained that. I, I explained that in a good way. Um, next week we'll be telling. We're expecting a move to the upside or downside next week, and that move will be telling us everything that we need to know. So that's pretty much it for the video. I will catch you guys next week. Everyone enjoy the rest of your weekend, and that's it. So take care.